okay so i hope voice is clear let me know yeah so a few topics about uh, the heritage and culture so according to the right information act 486 attitudes have been reported as missing you know what is meant by attitude like a um, artifact i mean excavated from the indus valley civilization site like a dancing girl in which site we have excavated the of course a idol of course we cannot call it as an idol a uh, doll type thing from which site a dancing girl was excavated harappar monzaro dancing girl a small statue of dancing girl yes monizaro so such kind of things are called as the antiques now india's antiquities and art treasuries act 1972 defines antiquity as any coin sculpture painting epigraph or other work of art or craftsmanship that has been in existence for not less than 100 years because see such kind of acts you will encounter in the examination don't take it granted that paper will be easy even yesterday's paper which is a specialization paper that is drug inspector gsc stuff all they have asked in the chronological order somebody has placed few questions or at least somebody has revealed that uh, most of the questions are in the chronological order and they asked which is the order is correct okay no issue so try to remember epigraph or other work of art or craftsmanship that has been in existence for not less than 100 years for a manuscript record or other documents which are of scientific historical literary or aesthetic value this duration is not less than 75 years what is manuscript a written evidence the unesco 1970 convention defines cultural property as the one designated by countries having importance for archaeology prehistory history literature art or science it is a definition of the unesco now evolution of indian laws related to the country's heritage before independence the antique antiques act 19, 1947 ensured that no antiquity could be exported without a license that is very important it is smuggling if any you see a uh, time and again uh, i mean you will see in the newspapers that uh, uh, panchalova idols which were to transport to some other countries were catched or the culprits were nabbed so you cannot uh, export them to the foreign countries there is no permission after independence the union state and concurrent list of schedule 7 of the indian constitution deal with the country's heritage very nice point the union state and concurrent list of uh, schedule 7 of the indian constitution deal with the country heritage in 1958 the ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains act was enacted but it has missed this uh, pdf has missed an important data which is the foundation to preserve the indian rich culture and heritage what is that which is missing here what is that which is missing here ఎక్కడ ఉంది వి హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఎస్ ఎస్ నైన్టీన్ నాట్ ఫోర్ మాన్యుమెంట్స్ యాక్ట్ పాస్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ కర్జన్ నైన్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎయిట్ మేడం ఓకే సో ఇట్ హ్యాస్ మిస్ దట్ దట్ ఈస్ దట్ లేట్ ద ఫౌండేషన్ టు ప్రిజర్వ్ 
India's cultural heritage, especially archaeology, and it paved the way for the excavation of the sites of Indus Valley civilization. Before that, even though we encountered the ruins of uh, IVC, no steps were taken further to honor the great culture and heritage of the nation. Okay? Yes. Now, other than the central government, no person can export any antiquity or art treasure. Even art treasure also, you are having paintings. Paintings. Like, take the example of Harsha. Can you tell me the famous paintings of Harsha? And you know Harsha was also a calligraphist. And take the example of uh, one of the Kerala king, Raja Ravi Varma, known for the um, art of painting and a, and a renowned painter. Even they are also considered or they are also come under the purview of this act. But paintings of Harsha. Yes, Sonpat, Bansikara, Madhuban. Okay? And in one of the painting of Harsha, there is signature. In which painting Harsha signature is found? Okay, Andy. Yes, yes, yes. Bant Sikera. Yes. Yeah. No person can carry on the business of selling any antiquity except in accordance with the terms and conditions of the of a license. Yes, a person can take the license and he can involve in the selling of the things. The center asks traders in antiquities and art object to declare their Positions of antiquities. So they have to reveal what sort of antiquities they are having, the traders. So this is this is with regard to the Antiquities and Odd Treasures Act 1972 because they may ask the year. Now, what is the provenance of antiquity? It, it includes the list of all owners from the time the object left its maker's position at the time it was acquired by the current owner. So now, it is important. Can India bring back antiquities? There are three categories. Category 1, Category 2, 3. Category 1, antiquities taken out of India pre-independence. Antiquities taken out since independence. Until the implementation of ATA. Because ATA came into existence in 1972. Category 3, antiquities, uh, antiquities taken out since 1976. For items in the first category, requests have to be raised bilaterally or an international Dias, or maybe international uh, uh, dias. Like we are trying to get back the Kohinoor diamond from the UK. In the same way also, even uh, maybe in the last year or last but one year, uh, one of the what the alums of Hyderabad, they were found in Australia. If I am not wrong, uh, because of government intervention, uh, they got back to the Hyderabad. Okay? Yes. For items in the second and third category, they can be retrieved by raising an issue bilaterally with proof of ownership and with the help of the UNESCO convention. Why are laws incapable of stopping illicit activity? Not only this, everything, we are unable to stop many things like smuggling of gold. Take the example of many cities, they are having the grey market. What is the meaning of grey market? Where where you can purchase the smuggled goods. So our authorities are uh, not uh, checking properly or they are not able to stop the illegal trade. Now, why are laws incapable of stopping illicit activity? The registered antiquities in India are a very small portion of the total number. In India, the problem with missing antiquity is that in many cases, there is no first information report. The biggest challenge India is facing is Bringing antiquities is the gap between the artifacts officially declared missing and, per, and surfacing in global market, museum, etc. So these, if, the, if these people are saying they are uh, the number has 200 in the global museum, they are 2000. It is a problem. Okay, no issue. Now, so few, few points with regard to the 
women and nation building 1857 to the republic on the occasion of the 133rd foundation day of the national archives of india an exhibition has highlighted highlighted the contributions of women in nation building and freedom struggle from 1857 to 1950 of course we know these people example of rani lakshmi bai and famously known for her valiant stand against the british in the seas of jansi and even she was also praised by a british army commander and we have said in our routine classes the husband name of jansi and horse name of uh, jansi lakshmi bai etc now i we have never encountered this battle of chinhat in our routine classes so begum hazrat mahal you know begum hazrat mahal was the widow of the deposed uh, avad the uh, i mean ruler mr wajid ali shah begum hazrat mal was a key figure in the lucknow uprising and led a force of rebels against the british in the battle of chinhat we never encountered in our routine classes history is vast maybe history is more uh, more uh, more volume than the size of universe yeah now sarojini naidu sarojini naidu was a prominent internationalist and the first indian woman to be presided of the inc first indian woman and who is the first first woman to preside anne besant in which session 1917 1917 participated in the international movement and was a key figure yeah and uh, she was termed as nightingale of india by mahatma gandhi now Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay was a social reformer, and uh, she she promoted handicrafts. Of course, we have never uh, encountered, but still, I mean, in course of Swadeshi movement, or uh, of course, in many movements, we have bu- we have boycotted the foreign goods. So try to remember Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay. Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay was a social reformer. She played an important role in promoting Indian handicrafts and empowering women. Now. you know about the <laughs> anne besant irish born british writer activist and and theosophist advocated for indian self rule home rule movement we have discussed in which year home rule movement was started in 1916 september 1916 september so before that you are having the tilaks uh, indian home rule league april don't get confused yes so one question whether i may be right or wrong any patient will adopt a person adopt a person what is the name of that person online students of course offline our senior person shaker has revealed the answer any patient will adopt a boy what is the name of that boy yes jiddu krishna murthy jiddu krishna murthy adopted son of anne besant adopted son of anne besant jiddu krishna murthy okay very nice now her contribution include being one of the founders of the banaras hindu university very very important now begum rokia a writer educator and social activities who worked for women education and advocated for women's right she was the founder of the first school for muslim girls in british india worked for women's education and was the pioneer of women's rights in india you may get this question founder of the first school for muslim girls in british india begum rokia try to uh, get uh, more information about such kind of great personalities now and you know madam bikaji rustum kama and uh, she was involved in the home rule movement 
instrumental in demanding equal rights for all Indians and first person to hoist the tricolor flag outside India. Of course, that flag was different from the flag which now we are using. She is also known as the mother of Indian revolution. Mother of Indian revolution. Who is called as great grand woman of uh, India? Great grand old woman of India. So Aruna Asafali and now mother of Indian revolution. Yeah, just Yanya Deko. Aruna Asafali. She was a political leader who participated in the Quit India movement. She hoisted the Indian national flag at the Gavalia Tank Maidan, Bombay during the Quit India movement in 1942. And this Gavalia Tank Maidan is also called as what is the name of what is the name of the tank now after the address of Gandhi? Gandhi will address the masses in this Gavalia tank, if I am not wrong, on 8th August. What is the name of this Maidan? Yes, August Kranti Maidan. And uh, where the Gandhi will use the words do or die. Now, she is known as the Grand Old Lady of Indian Independence. <laughs> grand Old Women or Grand Old Lady of Indian Independence for her role in freedom struggle. Okay. Now, So coming to the, of course, all these are also the current issues of March. Now, RBI has came up with a new concept called as expected credit loss. See, now, take the example of Silicon Valley Bank or many banks in the Western countries, especially America, they are subjected to some hardship. In 2008, there was a great banking crisis in the name of Lehman Brothers crisis. Yeah, but when you come to India, uh, bearing two or three banks or few banks, our uh, banking system is robust. No doubt in it. Okay. So this measure, expected credit loss, is to assess the worst situation in coming days, which person will be unable to pay the loan expected like we expect the questions so accordingly what the bank will do the bank will hold the cash in the hand like you are having the bezel bezel norms bezel norms has uh, mandated or stipulated the banks to keep some amount what is that amount it is capital adequacy ratio so, if you know expected credit loss accordingly, you will plan to have more uh, uh, money with you. See, when you come to India, you are having NPA. What is NPA? Non-performing assets. If a person is unable to pay the loan continuously for three months, then that account is categorized as the NPA. But when you come to the agricultural loans, this definition will not hold good. They are having their own definition. So, agricultural loans, they will conserve one season. One season. If, if in that season, if the, farm, if the farmer is unable to pay, then only it is categorized as NPA. Don't get confused with uh, 90 days and other things. Along with the NPS, along with the NPS, even Indian banking system will also use uh, some other term. What is that term? That is nothing but stressed assets. Can you tell me an can, can you tell me an example of stressed assets? Yes, actually, we are moving uh, in the economics like uh, uh, MA, MA economics are even uh, beyond our syllabus. Even our evening star is also um, teaching excellently. He is going beyond because on the first day itself he said that your students are excellent. They are answering in a fair manner. I have to prepare to teach them. I gave time to. Uh, 
టైమ్ టు దట్ సర్ టు ప్రిపేర్ ఫర్ ద ఎకనామిక్ సర్వే యు ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ స్ట్రెస్డ్ అసెట్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రెస్డ్ అసెట్ an example which comes under stressed asset yes varsha restructured loan is an example of stressed asset so definitely upsc and I, I, of course even our uh, tspsc group one prelims also it will be tough because all the exams are becoming tougher and tougher yes theek hai so try to remember expected rate loss is a new concept where where uh, uh, they wanted to see that banking system will not collapse and uh, this uh, will make the banks to make provisions accordingly but the issue with the banks is they have to keep uh, uh, more uh, cash with them or hold the hold the money with them because they cannot lend to the other person or at least they have to deploy that money in the other banks they will get the interest or they can deploy with the rbi but that interest will be far less compared to the interest which they get if they lend in the open market the, I mean, that is the issue with the uh, i mean expected credit loss now real time trend information system it is nothing but you can check in the phone where is our friend when he is moving from hyderabad to shirdi the train is where now or it is expected to reach shirdi by what time it is the real time train information system okay in order to deploy satellite based technology for real time train tracking sorry train tracking indian railways and the indian space research organization have linked a memorandum of understanding inked a memorandum of understanding this is the system will be used to deliver precise real time information on train movement and position across the nation now year by year india's sugar exports to the world are surging if india stops export see in spite of these exports you know the sugar industries are not running in good condition you know sugar industries owe thousands of thousands of crores of rupees to the farmers who are growing the sugar train it is a known truth and uh, in the states like up it will become a burning topic at the time of elections and you know even the important thing that is uh, i mean sugar industry is shifting from north india to south india of course it is shifting means all the north indian industries are not coming to south india south india is also having the potential for the sugar industries accordingly more and more industries are coming and the, all the existing in the, all the existing industries in north india are surviving no doubt in it what is the main reason for the shift of uh, the sugar industry from north india to south india what is the main reason only one word answer what is the main reason yes tropical moist climate south india is having tropical moist climate because south india is covered by the ocean if it is having tropical moist climate automatically the sucrose content will be more if sucrose content is more you will get the good yield okay so if uh, indian government will not export sugar then the sugar price will fall like anything in my opinion the sugar prices are not too high the reason is we will not consume sugar in kgs daily very hardly one teaspoon if they are uh, uh, the fans of tea like me other person if they are not if they are away from tea means they will not consume anything if government will not export that then we will face the wrath and who is the competitor for us brazil cuba etc theek hai the value of india's sugar exports has increased dramatically from 18.9 million in 2017-18 to 4.6 billion in 21-22 and they may even surpass 5.5 billion see in my personal opinion in the coming days in the coming days 
the share of agriculture sector in exports may increase no doubt in it because all the countries are facing the problem of uh, uh, food crisis they are having food crisis now take the example of pakistan they are fighting for the for the uh, to get the wheat unlike india we are throwing sometimes we will throw the wheat in the ocean food corporation of india if uh, if the age of that uh, wheat crosses by one and a half year or two years what they will do they will sell that in the name of uh, cattle feed because they cannot uh, supply the same to the pds outdated wheat so in my opinion in the coming days definitely so definitely our agri exports will increase and even as government of india is taking steps to uh, i mean energize our food processing industries automatically the main aim of food processing industry is to increase the shelf life so automatically there is every chance that we will export to the foreign countries okay. see earlier we were um, i'm not seeing kiwi gardens in india now it has become very common take the example of dragon fruit very common yes the growth is notable both qualitatively and quantitatively with india shipments rising from just 0.46 lakhs tons into the of course no need of these uh, statistics but very important thing which country is the buyer which country is the buyer of the indian sugar means in more quantity which can so now you can expect such kind of questions which country is the buyer of indian sugar in more quantity <laughs> Priti Garo, USA. USA is in general top destination. Even in Telangana also we have discussed as far as exports are concerned. Pharmaceutical share is more and even the destination is USA which we have discussed in our Telangana economic survey. Indonesia, followed by Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Malaysia were top importers of Indian raw sugar. So, Indonesia, followed by Bangladesh. Yeah, and again, uh, there are various types of sugars. Kansari and uh, refined, like you are having the parlay sugars, madur sugars. And when you come to India, even we will also manufacture jaggery, jaggery also. It is with regard to the sugar. Reason behind India's surge in sugar exports. In contrast to Brazilian raw sugar, Indian raw sugar is dextran free. Try to remember this point. Indian raw sugar is dextran free. That is very important. And uh, yes. Now, what is this? Call before you dig application. What is the aim of this application? Call before you dig application. See, now what is happening in urban areas? So, Reliant Zio will dig to lay their lines. Automatically afterwards, uh, uh, I mean, routinely, the GHMC will lay the road, nice road. Afterwards, Airtel will dig. Okay? So, to avoid such kind of things, to avoid, uh, yes, to have an idea or uh, what you say, coordination between di different departments. So, this concept was initiated. Prime Minister has launched the call before you dig app to facilitate coordination between excavation agencies and underground utility owners to prevent damage to utilities due to digging your wires or our underground drains or whatever may be the case and actually what government should do one month they have to say that in this month only you have to dig and lay the lines either atel or zio or whatever may be the case Next month, they have to lay the roads. Now, what is happening? One person is digging. Uh, again, the road is uh, cleaned or cleared. 
are paved after 15 days other person will dig so a plan should be made by the government and even government money is also uh, getting uh, wasted in uh, uh, filling the pits etc it is a huge burden on the exchequer see uncoordinated digging and excavation contribute to loss of roughly 3000 crore annually by damaging underlying assets like optical fiber cables it will be more than 3000 crores yes now and we have discussed in earlier classes india is pushed for semiconductors so and luckily even in many parts of our country even we have explored the reserves of the rare earth minerals which are widely used in the manufacture of semiconductors and even in the last classes semiconductor industry is sign ka none because in every in every electronic item including vehicles these are very important and even india is uh, i mean encouraging this industry with the help of uh, pls scheme pli pl not pls pli production linked incentive try to remember that production linked incentive now which is the first national park in the world yes lithium in rajasthan jammu and kashmir okay yellowstone national park which is celebrating 151st anniversary this year is widely considered to be the first national park in the world and it is known for geysers geysers are the associated landform of volcano okay yes so you may get question with regard to this it is widely considered to be the first national park it is a sizable protected region large in the state of wyoming in the us but it also includes the part of montana etc yes 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 some key features geothermal features geysers hot springs all these are the associated landform of the volcano and of course wildlife different types of wildlife there is no need to mug up that yes many beautiful drives park etc fishing common now india pitches for international big cat alliance this alliance the aim of this alliance is to increase the okay so india pitches for international big cat alliance okay so so when we come to the international big cat alliance its aim is to see that its aim is to see that our cat population will increase now what are what are major big cat the seven ma main big cat the tiger lion leopard snow leopard puma you see because in telangana state services they are asking Uh, i mean such kind of questions like which uh, city will not come under the amrut or which city is amrut etc the seven main big cat the tiger lion leopard snow leopard puma jaguar and cheetah will be protected and conserved as a result of the proposed mega global coalition you remember one point you can use this point to uh, address the steps taken by the government i mean steps taken by the uh, i mean steps taken by the government to increase the cat uh, i mean that is tiger population now unep pitches for global greenhouse gas monitoring infrastructure what is the aim of this global greenhouse monitoring infrastructure
See now, you are having different type of industries, different type of vehicles, and different type of clusters, like Apparel Park, like you can see in the very near to the Hyderabad Amangal, a pharma hub is coming. See, in total, we are assessing the pollution. In total, in total, we are assessing the pollution. Now, what is the aim of this, these devices? It will study the case to case. How much is the pollution of industry? How much is the pollution of uh, vehicle? And how much is the pollution of a specific industry? Suppose like leather industry, tanning. You are having tanning. Tanning industry uh, will cause a lot of pollution. And which chemical is widely used in the tanning industry? Which, uh, which, which chemical is widely used in tanning industry? That is sulfuric acid. So, UNEP pitches for global greenhouse gas monitoring infrastructure by which we can, uh, we can uh, address the issues uh, by knowing the informed decision. Suppose if you are having a cluster of leather, then by this instrument, you can assess what is the pollution. Okay? Yeah. So, try to remember this. But the problem is, it may be costly and... Uh, all the countries may not be able to offer for that. Okay. Global Greenhouse Gas Monitoring Infrastructure. The UN Environment Program is creating the new system, also known as the Common Global Standard for Sustainability. It will offer a uniform framework for calculating and disclosing greenhouse gas emissions across numerous industries, such as transportation, energy, like thermal plants, etc. And by which we can address the issues. Okay? Yeah. Now, see, there are many disasters in India. There are many disasters in India. Whether, uh, of course, there are many hazards in India. Okay. See, we are having many hazards, natural hazards. Natural hazards and also man-made hazards. Whether all natural hazards and the man-made hazards are uh, in the list of disasters, there are many things which are not in the list of the disasters. That point you remember. Take the example of lightning. Lightning is not in the list of disasters. Because National Disaster Management Authority has classified only few hazards as the disasters and the remaining not as disasters. So why it is in the news means many states are demanding to include lightning under the category of the disaster. Now, now, States demand that lightning be declared a national disaster. A few states have requested lightning to be declared a national disaster due to high number of deaths caused in the country. And even in the recent days in uh, Telangana also, many people faced death and even hundreds of cattle died. And we have discussed what is the reason for the lightning. It is a um, differential in the polarity in the clouds as the light uh, uh, i mean water um, molecule will move upwards and the heavy water molecule in the form of ice will move downwards and in between their collision will also result in the lightning we have discussed in the routine classes now what i mean to say is here you have to remember what all are included in the list of disasters according to current standards disasters covered by the state disaster response fund include Cyclones, you know cyclone is a low pressure area and especially coastal areas will suffer a lot. And droughts, it is lack of rainfall. Cyclone is heavy rainfall, drought, lack of rainfall. And you have to remember the definition of drought, definition of the drought. 
If the if the annual rainfall in the region is less than 50 percent of the normal, then it is called as a drought. Suppose if the um, annual rainfall in the year is 100 uh, 100 centimeters, then if it is only um, less than 50 centimeters, then it is called as the drought. Try to remember this. Okay. Now earthquakes, you know, fires, floods, tsunamis, and hails. You know tsunami. When earthquake occurs in the, um, I mean, ocean bed, you will encounter the, I mean, tsunami. Hailstorm, that is, uh, uh, in Telugu it is called as Valagana Bala. That is, ice uh, pellets will uh, fall on the ground. Landslides, avalanches, cloud bursts. Last class I asked you in the class. When I asked you the storm search, you were saying about the cloud burst. Cloud burst is also a disaster. Whereas storm surge is not a disaster because it, it is it is covered under the cyclone. It is an associated disaster of the cyclone. Okay? Yes. And uh, pest attacks. Frost. You know pest attack like uh, lo loco? Locust. Locust. Frost and cold waves. See here, even... There is no heat wave in this. Even heat wave is also not considered a disaster. But nowadays, the heat wave became more common. And even in the recent uh, uh, days, if I am not wrong, in one place in Maharashtra, in a meeting, nearly 10 members died due to heat waves. Of course, it was in paper. It was in paper. Yes. Now, you may get, get question with regard to a volcano, Mount Merapi, because it became active and it is the most active volcano of the Indonesia. And you know Indonesia and adjoining islands will have will have will have uh, uh, frequent uh, volcanic eruptions. It is because of because they are very near to the ring of fire. Okay, yes. Indonesia's second most active Merapi volcano. In some books, it has given as the first most active volcano. I don't know what is the problem with regard to these uh, PDFs and books. Merapi volcano suddenly erupted, spewing hot lava and a column of hot clouds rising 100 meters into the air. So you may get in recent days which uh, volcano in the Indonesia became more active. It is the Merapi. So because such kind of uh, questions from the uh, world history are common. And uh, you know why why there are large number of volcanoes because of the because of nearness to the I mean Pacific Ring of Fire between the islands of Java and Sumatra in the Sunda Strait stands Mount Krokotowa. It is notorious for 1883 eruption. So even such kind of question they ask. But try to remember this Merapi. Now, what is Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan? A program, Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan. Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan. Okay, see, frequently you can see in the newspapers, cattle falling into the tank or children, small children, they will fall in the tank and they will uh, face death or any injury. So the aim of Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan is to see that all these tanks, whether the public tanks, now take the example of villages, Gram Panchats, many tanks will be constructed by the, I mean, uh, these Gram Panchats. And most of them are open. So now, the aim of Anmol Abhiyan is, this tank should be covered. And uh, how you will uh, draw the water? 
a small hand pump should be installed to take the water. That is the scheme of Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan. A recent initiative called the Anmol Jeevan Abhiyan in Barma Rajasthan has motivated village panchayats and homeowners to add hand pumps and locked covers to tankas for improved structure. You can see to a tank a small hand pump was fitted. Okay? Yes. Now, now one nation, one challenge initiative. This is the need of the hour. So, it is tough because there should be coordination between the transport department and traffic police. I'm not only of one state, different states. See, now take the example of Hyderabad. If any Karnataka vehicle comes to Hyderabad and if it violates the traffic, Though the police person take the uh, photo of that violation, but he is helpless because he cannot get the address or something like that one. So, uh, there is a long way to go for this, but it is good because uh, if you implement such kind of things, the violations are uh, will get reduced and, uh, and even uh, they will also minimize the I mean accidents. So now what you have to do along with the One Nation and uh, One Chalan, already you are linking the other, already you are linking the other to the, uh, I mean vehicle. Suppose if I am, if I will take a new vehicle, I have to submit my other. Now what we have to do, you have to also submit a bank account such that automatically this violated amount will be debited like the Western countries. It is my personal opinion. You may like it or you may not like it. Yes. Because you are uh, the top bureaucrats. Uh, of course, you are going to become the top, uh, I mean, top, uh, top uh, I mean, officers. You have to give such kind of advices. Yes. Now, Bengal is tackling fatal adenovirus infection. Of course, I am not the right person to the, uh, tease this. But still, you remember this. It is uh, the problem with the uh, small children uh, below three years of age, it is like flu. Now, Home Ministry begins process to sell enemy properties. Means, the people uh, who went to Pakistan or a smuggler, something like that one. Why I am saying is one agreement is there. The Home Ministry has begun the process to sell enemy properties, immovable assets, left behind by people who have taken citizenship in Pakistan and China after wars with these countries, after wars with these countries. So their properties are called as the enemy properties. Why such a concept initiated? People moved from India to Pakistan in the aftermath of 65 and 75 after the wars and the government of India authorities seized the properties. And who, are, who adopted Pakistani nationality in accordance with the Defense of India guidelines created under the Defense of India Act 1962. Uh, they have taken the Pakistani I mean, citizenship automatically. He will become enemy and his properties in India will become the enemy property. The custodian of enemy property for India received these enemy properties from the federal government. After the Sino-Indian War of 1962, the same was... Uh, uh, done with respect to the property left behind people who migrated to China. China and Pakistan. Now, you have to remember a paragraph in the Tashkent Declaration of January 10, 1966 said that India and Pakistan would talk about returning the property. But in spite of this agreement, Pakistan has violated and they have sold the properties of Indians in Pakistan. And accordingly, we have reacted. Okay? Yes. However, the Pakistani government sold off every one of these assets in that nation in 1971, uh, dishonoring the agreement. Now, Indian government uh, is selling these properties. In India, there are 12,611 wholesale properties with value of more than 1 lakh crore. It is a registration value means uh, the actual value will, uh, will run into more and more crores. So, one agreement, try to remember this agreement, Tashkent Declaration. Okay? And everything is common.
no following uttar pradesh in order of enemy property count is west bengal so uttar pradesh is having uttar pradesh is having more enemy properties even you may get that question also followed by west bengal yes now what is this assam's maidams meet unesco technical requirement for heritage center what is this maidams assam's maidams what is this in nutshell yes they are the tombs of the ahom kingdom the kings of the ahoms of course ahom is a kingdom theek hai assam's pyramid like structures known as maidams or maidams have met all the technical requirements of unesco's world heritage center charadio maidams the charadio maidams is a representation of the thai ahom <coughs> thai ahoms communities thai ahom communities mount burial practice from the late medieval period so try to remember this charadio maidams and the ahom kingdom and assam and uh, we know allur sitaramaraju and komaram bhim we have discussed in our routine classes several times bhutan no longer a least developed country now it has entered into the uh, category of developing country e postal ballot for overseas indian voters so actually with the help of email they can cast their vote because nearly more than 1 lakh people are staying outside it, it it may be more and more also now the bill aimed to make it possible for voters from other countries to cast ballots in person or by proxy this bill actually that is in the bill of the 2018 proxy means a person can appoint uh, other person to cast his vote but now election commission of india has proposed to facilitate the electronically transmitted postal ballot system for overseas indian voters the toll system is through the email email electronically electronically transmitted postal ballot system the eci then approached the government to allow nris to vote via postal ballots similar to a system that is already used by service voters who are members of the armed forces of the union yes now our military will vote through postal ballot suppose even now take the example of uh, teachers or any person who, who who is having the election duty if he is having the election duty he cannot cast the vote so he will be given the postal ballot and you can see in the counting first postal ballots are counted so the same thing you want to extend to the nris but through email mode or electronic mode now you know a surat court has convict has convicted i mean rahul gandhi for 2 years of imprisonment and uh, he was disqualified what uh, articles will govern the disqualification of a law member either a mla or mp disqualification of a law law maker is prescribed in three situation constitutional provisions the first is found in articles 102 clause 1 for member of parliament 191 clause 1 for member of state legislature and uh, the grounds in this case include holding a position of profit being incompetent or insane or lacking legal or lacking legal citizenship means if i go to other country and take the i mean citizenship automatically it is a illegal citizenship now in uh, in telangana chennamani ramesh is facing uh, such kind of issue the mla from vemulawada if i am not wrong okay so try to remember this kind of things you know be specific to address the nowadays question paper the first is found in articles 102 class 1 and 191 class 1 which respectively disqualify members of the legislative assembly and parliament the grounds in this case include holding a position of profit being incompetent or insane or lacking legal citizenship now defection 
it is dealt by the 10th schedule what is defection causing harm to the mother party what is defection causing harm to the mother party suppose if i get elected from trs or brs if i jump into other party that is called as a defection and if you act uh, against the order of the party you know there is one post in india who will issue the order what is the name of that post whip if you do any wrong to the whip then you will attract the defection this one this is a case where a person convicted of not less than 2 years will be disqualified the 1951 rpa representation of the people's act it stipulates the exclusion of conviction in criminal proceedings because all these may be asked in the examination because as it is the burning topic it stipulates the disqualification under rpa 1951 it stipulates the exclusion of conviction in criminal proceedings disqualification due to conviction of offenses is covered under section 8 of the rpa definitely the clause aims to avoid the criminalization of politics and prevent tainted legislature from running for office section 8 clause 3 states a person convicted of any offense and sentenced to imprisonment for not less than 2 years all these are important because now it is the burning topic i think yeah so time and again festivals will appear in the paper yoshang festival every year on the full moon of lamta in the mithai lunar calendar the yoshang festival is observed yoshang meet thaba popularly known as the burning of the straw hut begin just after nightfall it is a practice of uh, manipuri tribes and okay yes okay i think no more issues yes thank you Okay thank you